As the water falls from the sky, becoming rivers great and small, and finally the sea, so do the lives and blood of men course through the land and become history. Harald Hardrada was born in 1015 in Ringrike, Norway. As a young boy, he traveled with his half-brother Olav den Heilige, or Olav the Holy, to Gardarike, modern-day Russia. He survived the Battle of Stiklestad, where Olav fell. Harald fled to Byzantium and the Eastern Roman Empire, who took up service in Varengarden or the Varangian Guard, Scandinavian mercenaries of renown. In the seven years he served there, he rose to become the highest commanding officer of the Varangians through 18 battles around the Mediterranean Sea, conquering a total of 80 cities. When Harald returned to Norway, him and his men were wealthy and hungry for power. He quickly became one of two Norwegian kings, the second, Magnus, dying after a year. Harald turned his attentions across the sea to England, where he had a solid claim for the throne. Conflict with Denmark increased the size of his hird and the local levy forces, the Leidang, considerably. He assembled a large force of Vikings, both Scandinavian and otherwise, 300 ships in total. He sailed across the sea, past Shetland and the Orkneys, up the river Tyne and defeated the English there. An unusually hot day, the 25th of September, him and his men left most of their equipment behind by the ships. A third of the army guarded the ships, and here the ancient accounts vary, as they often do. The Anglo-Saxon chronicles say the Norwegian army was to receive tribute in the form of captives and slaves. The Icelandic sagas say Harald and his men went for a walk to get the lay of the land. Both accounts agree that Harold Goodwinson was on his way with a great army of his most elite warriors, having marched a considerable distance in full armour, and that the Norwegians were caught completely by surprise when they saw them their armor and weapons gleaming like shards of ice in the summer sun. Some say the Norwegians were enjoying the warm weather, swimming in the river and having made their camp there. Some say the Norwegians were on the march. With all the sagas and ancient accounts, there is considerable reason for doubt regarding the details of them, as they are often written down after the fact by someone who wasn't there, with unclear agendas and an eye for the dramatic. Harald Haroda was given counsel to retreat and to gather strength. This he would not do. He had never retreated from battle and would test his fortunes even lacking armor for, his, for himself and his soldiers. He sent a small detachment to hold Stamford Bridge, allowing him to take up position on the hill behind him. He ordered his first rank of spearmen to brace their spears against the ground, kneel and aim for the chest of the horse. The second rank would aim for the chest of the rider. He created a defensive circle, and it wasn't long until the English were upon them, as the party that held the bridge was slaughtered. The Anglo-Saxon chronicles detail a Viking Basakka holding the bridge alone against the advancing army. No such mention is made in the Saga of the Kings. He is said to have held the bridge, allowing the Norwegians to form up on the hills behind it until an Englishman floating down the river in a barrel skewered the berserker from below and killed him. This account is one of the more popular of the battle, but it's, it's highly questionable, and likely a later addition. The English poured across the bridge on foot and horseback, encircling the Norwegians. There was a great skirmish, arrows darkened the sky, and javelins fell thick on both sides. The English cavalry rode circles around the Norwegians, provoking response. Here and there, Vikings would break out of the shield wall, making them easy targets for spear and sword. As the wall weakened, Harald became mad with rage and charged into the fray. He cut left and right with both hands and men fell before him. The Vikings fought and died, only having their shields for protection. Viking shields were relatively fragile, only meant to last the battle. This battle had already lasted the afternoon and King Harald saw his men were weakening and dying around him. He called for a man to run to the ships and get Øystein Ore and the rest of the Norwegian army in full gear. This he did and the heavily armed and armoured Vikings ran to the aid of their comrades in the hot summer sun, some dying from exhaustion before they landed a single blow. The charge of the remaining forces almost broke the English, but Harald Haroda was struck in the neck by an arrow and fell. With him died the Viking Age, although his blood would course through the veins of Norwegian kings far into the future. Across the battlefield, small isolated pockets of Norwegians held out, but finally succumbed. Valor and determination.
determination were no match for the arms and armor of the Anglo-Saxons. While 300 ships transported them across the sea, only 24 were required for the voyage home. The rest would fill the halls of Valhalla. While the Battle of Stamford Bridge was a victory for Harold Goodwinson, he now faced a new threat and with a weakened army. Wilhelm the Conqueror sailed across the channel with a great host, himself a descendant of Viking blood. In a twist of fate, the Viking Age ends with the defeat of one Viking army, as another, descending from Norwegian nobility, sets out to change the history of England, Europe and the world for centuries to come.